Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to make a frequency table. Now remember, frequency tables show us the number of times something occurs in a data set. Let's jump into our example and see how to make a frequency table. So for our data, let's say that an ice cream shop kept track of the flavors being sold over the course of a day to see how sales of each flavor ended up. Here are the results. Now CH stands for chocolate, VA stands for vanilla, PB stands for peanut butter cup, CD stands for cookie dough, and MI stands for mint chocolate chip. Let's make a frequency table to organize this data. We have five flavors that we need to include. So let's draw this table and I'll start with three columns and a row up top for the column headers, the column labels. The first column is going to be the flavors column. The second or middle column is going to be the tally column. And then the third column, the column on the right, is the frequency column. Next, we need our rows for the flavors. So we need five. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's fill in the flavors. So chocolate, vanilla, peanut butter cup, cookie dough, and mint chocolate chip. Now we can work through the data and find each frequency, the number of times each flavor occurs within the data. We can work through this different ways. For example, we can go one by one, so work from left to right, tallying one flavor at a time. Or we can work from left to right and tally multiple flavors at a time. So do, for example, three flavors at a time. Another option is to tally all of one flavor and then move on to the next flavor. So for example, count all of the chocolate, then count all of the vanilla, so on and so forth. So there are multiple options as far as working through the data and counting everything. Do whatever works best for you. I'm going to work from left to right and tally multiple flavors at one time. I'll do three flavors at a time. We will start with chocolate, peanut butter cup, vanilla. So chocolate, peanut butter cup, and vanilla. Chocolate, peanut butter cup, cookie dough. Chocolate, peanut butter cup, cookie dough. Peanut butter cup, mint chocolate chip, chocolate. Peanut butter cup, mint chocolate chip and chocolate, chocolate, vanilla, cookie dough, chocolate, vanilla, cookie dough, cookie dough, peanut butter cup, mint chocolate chip, cookie dough, peanut butter cup, mint chocolate chip, vanilla, cookie dough, peanut butter cup, vanilla, cookie dough, peanut butter cup, chocolate, chocolate, cookie dough. So chocolate, chocolate, cookie dough, cookie dough, chocolate, vanilla, cookie dough, chocolate, vanilla, chocolate, peanut butter cup, peanut butter cup, chocolate, peanut butter cup, peanut butter cup, chocolate, vanilla, mint chocolate chip, chocolate, vanilla, mint chocolate chip, Vanilla cookie dough peanut butter cup. Vanilla cookie dough peanut butter cup. Chocolate, chocolate, vanilla. Chocolate, chocolate, vanilla. 
chocolate, peanut butter cup, peanut butter cup, chocolate, peanut butter cup, peanut butter cup, cookie dough, chocolate, chocolate, cookie dough, chocolate, chocolate. Now that we have everything tallied, let's do our final counts for the frequency column. Let's start with chocolate. So we have 14 for chocolate. Vanilla, we have seven. Peanut butter cup, we have 10. Cookie dough, we have eight. And then mint chocolate chip, we have three. So chocolate was sold 14 times. Vanilla was sold seven times. Peanut butter cup was sold 10 times. Cookie dough was sold eight times. And then mint chocolate chip was sold three times. And then let's put a title up here. So flavors of ice cream sold. So you can see that this frequency table helped us organize our data. This is much easier to interpret. It's much more meaningful than just looking at a list of flavors. So there you have it. There's how to create a frequency table. And we worked with qualitative data, non-numerical data for our example. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.